Hi, this is VK4, GX CEO with another receiver. Uh, I had a request for some of the modern, more modern receivers uh, that I've been working on. Um, and this is a VOHF um, Telefunken AEG. It's an E1900-3. Uh, it's a VOHF set which covers 20 to 500 megs. Uh, there are versions of this which will go up to 1000 megs with uh, an additional module fitted to it. Um, the receiver itself is probably 19, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, a lot of the chips inside this one are dated 88, 89. So um, that's roughly when uh, this particular unit would have been made. Um, it had a uh, power supply issue when I uh, received it. It uh, basically I had to go through the whole power supply. There's, there's very little information on the web. Um, and let us go through uh, component by component virtually. Uh, rebuilt the whole power supply in the end and uh, she's, worked, she's actually working quite well now. Um, as with many of the receivers of this vintage, the, the main uh, assembly structure is to have a, a front panel uh, interface system, which is usually microprocessored, um, and a back plane. And that back plane then receives a number of modules which are pushed in from the rear and uh, in this particular case, you're looking at some byte work over in this corner here, um, front end and um, uh, synthesizer, down conversion, um, some IF and IF filters. The whole, this module here specifically just has all the, the filters in there, which are a number of, I believe, ceram uh, sorry, crystal filters, uh, all 21.4 uh, megs. So they're, um, uh, they're reasonably sharp, um, but what I was gonna say is there's a, an SSB feature on this particular set and uh, obviously it's a fairly um, low um, rejection. It wouldn't be uh, regarded as a very, uh, imp you know, it would be regarded as a very impressive filter by today's standards. So that's fundamentally the, uh, the look of the unit. Uh, I'll just do a quick show around the back. The back of the unit, uh, as we say, has a number of plug-in modules, uh, all screwed in um, using the usual various strip at the top and bottom. Uh, on the left here is the main power supply system. It actually has an AC or DC in this particular power supply. Um, IF system and filters. Uh, as we work along, here's the main RF input. Um, they have a number of link, linking uh, semi ridges in the back here. Uh, it can get a bit more complicated once you have the additional um, expanded band, uh, which would be fitted in this, this location here. Um, and on the right here, there's uh, a bit of bite work going on uh, where they actually inject um, some, some RF here at this point. And uh, you can have these either serially or um, I'd I-488. And uh, this particular, I'm not sure what we get in there, but there's a 488 uh, plug in here. And of course the usual address, address uh, settings at the top. Haven't really given that a go, um, probably won't. But uh, I'm, I'm assuming it probably does work. Anyway, the, uh, the receiver itself is now, now functioning as it should. I'll uh, just go around to the, to the front again. So this is the, uh, the front-facing uh, side of the receiver, obviously intended for a little bit of manual operation. Uh, in fact, with its vintage, it was where that transitioning was occurring from uh, manual still control with uh, remote. And as you can see, there is a remote feature in here. Um, the front panel is really broken up into a number of areas. This section here is all to do with um, processor control, scanning. Um, it, it's, it's the parameters you want to change and uh, fiddle around with under a scanning um, or byte, or this is really controlling a microprocessor for a number of test routines and program routines. And uh, these are all listed in the manual. Um, I have a, a manual in German, which uh, is, I've had to brush up on my German to uh, understand. But fundamentally there's uh, say a set of tests which all begin T and then a number, and I'll, I'll go through those in a moment, and, and programs with a PR. And one of the issues I'd had with this uh, is that I noticed it had the three kilohertz filter fitted uh, and indeed it had a little label above SSB here um, for the, the operator to understand which was the SSB pin. Uh, so, and I was surprised it, it was rejecting all the SSB selection. Um, what had appeared to have occurred is that there had been some corruption at some point um, and it basically kept saying it wasn't fitted, um, although it was, and uh, drilling down into the manual there was an ability to scan the filters under program control, it does it under under a test um, test byte as well, but it does it under program control and identifies the uh, insertion point for the three kilohertz filter. Uh, and once you've run that, everything became accessible again. So there's a control feature here. There's the main sort of RF sections. There's not obviously the usual in built-in filter uh, speak. It's not too bad. 
um, quite good for, for its size. Um, so this is frequency selection and bandwidth. Uh, this is slow, fast. If I go through them, um, this is the memory um, memory recall channel flag. You can set the settings uh, under under scanning for lots of different uh, applications, or so pass, or lockout, or hold for a certain number of seconds. Uh, so there's a memory recall, memory store, uh, data out. This feature, this this particular receiver appears to have the ability to drive a um, either through the serial or through the HBIB port, um, logged, uh, how can I put it, uh, log channels detected under a scan or um, frequency scan or channel scan. So if you could imagine you have a print off this or a, a monitor off this, some method of monitoring the, um, the output. As it scans, it will log to a frequency, it will log the frequency, log the mode, uh, do a lot of logging, and then once that channel's closed, it will move on. Now, I think you can actually probably program it to only dwell for a certain amount of time to do that, uh, and then move on irrespective of squelch. But I'm not going to go into that depth. Uh, my German isn't that good to understand exactly what uh, what is going on. Uh, and by the way, if anybody does know of an English manual for this set, I'll be uh, very happy to be uh, be pointed at it and, and, and check further, further things. So moving just to the right, there is a, a very nice tuning aid, which is basically just a zero. It's a little discriminator circuit. Uh, of course, the usual uh, RF leveling, and uh, that can be uh, switched between AF and RF. So you can monitor the actual audio output levels. And here are the modes. So you've got CW, AM, SSB, upper and lower. Um, don't know what PON is, it doesn't, doesn't like PON. F FM, and um, I suspect, by the way, this is probably a... Um, Pulsed, pulse system. Uh, and then there's an A3, F3, so that's AM and FM at the, uh, the same time, which is uh, interesting. Um, below that is the HC pin with slow and fast AGC uh, and a squelch function, which is uh, basically run off the, the manual gain control of the IF in this particular set. Uh, carrier switch relay, and there's even a limiter for the, the AM. Uh, I have switched that in, but it's, uh, it, it does work function, but that's, uh, we just don't need it here. Uh, here's the microphone off off, sorry, the speaker on off button, um, just basically to mute the speaker on the, the actual set. Uh, one thing which is really nice on this particular unit, um, which I've used a lot, is this is a, a signal to noise detect. So this is similar to a, um, in the old SSB features of uh, um, an audio, or should I put it, uh, some detection of information within the noise um, that allows the squelch to, 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 uh, to, to be lifted. And it's very, it's very impressive, it works very well. Um, so that's fundamentally the, uh, the main receiver. I'll switch it on. Now, I was listening to some of the uh, local air, air band channels here, just to give you an idea. And currently, signal detector's on, so if I turn that off, you'll see it's... Um, put it back, put it back on, just to give you an idea. The only thing I've noticed with this is you get that one or two seconds of hash at the end of each call, unless you activate the squelch as well and, and preset it back to where uh, you can see the lever meter there. So turning up, the squelch is starting to come in. It's a little bit more like a, uh, on some of the valve gear here, we have some kind of silencer, which was the early attempts at squelch. And that's sort of more or less how it sort of functions. Um, just some of the other features. So you can run test routines. Here, so you can test, um, like test 01, XE, and she'll go off and she'll look at the filters and she'll actually tune here, as you can see it going through it tuning, and it scans the filter bandwidths and uh, inserts them in the requisite positions. And in this particular unit, there are five uh, crystal filters and one wideband um, two meg filter. And you see that coming up there. So we'll just clear that. And, and you, again, the filters are just purely selected by up or down. And you can go right up to the two meg section there. So that's the uh, the fundamental operation of the unit. Um, I don't think there's much more I can show you. There's, there's very little going on here, very little traffic, yeah, mainly the air band. Um, it will receive uh, some VHF uh, broadcast, although I do have a filter in mind for this, but I'll see if we can come down. So we go down, we're up to its 90 kilohertz. No, it's not really quite it's wide enough. With plenty of so it's stock a little bit, right now across the range. A little bit cut off. And it's the perfect time to get into your brand new model. With, with a wide selection to choose from. Whether you're into the
This is the classical radio station. Okay, they're all a little bit low, low level because of a filter I do have uh, to block out the uh, broadcast so I can receive VHF. I will just see if there's any amateur radio stations on at the moment. Doesn't sound like there's anything to be honest. Let's, take, let's turn that off. Let's bring this down a bit. And we'll go there. Switch off. No, there's nothing. We've got a few repeaters locally, but there's nothing coming through. It's very, very quiet here. There is a community station, which I think I've shown another. Now you can see the tuning aid. I'm going to go left and right there to sweep, sweep past it. Uh, I'm on fast tune, so it's um, the red indicates center, so it's a bit tricky to get into it. But um, there we go. this is a local Vietnamese FM broadcast. Again, the signal's coming quite strong here on this. Well, that's hopefully uh, a quick view of the, uh, the AEG. Um, any questions, by all give us a call. Um, but um, there's not much more I can really show on that uh, on this particular band at the moment.